Let me see if I can guess your current predicament. So you're worried about the future environment and want to do your part in this world while you still can to combat the disasters of pollution and climate change. But you're either pressured by your friends or your family that, you know, working for the environment won't pay the bills and that there's no job market demand for it. All of these are real fears that people go through when they're deciding whether or not to pursue this type of career. And honestly, I was no different. Growing up in an Asian household, my parents wanted me to work in the medical field, which is why I initially chose chemistry for my bachelor's, but I knew that the world and the future environment won't fix itself unless someone like steps up to do it. So that's why I made the bold decision to switch my major from chemistry to my master's in environmental engineering, despite what all my family told me to do. You know, they said that there is never a future in the environment, that it won't ever pay the bills, that I'm wasting my money and I'm wasting my time, and they're angry and upset and scared for me. But here I am, you know, I'm still in this field and I'm thriving at it. I'm doing what is right for the future, you know, despite all the negativity from my friends and my family. So here's the question, is environmental engineering a good and long-term stable job to have? And if you know me, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. The answer will vary and it will depend on several different factors. And I wanna take a look at some of them and see why it varies so drastically. That way you can decide whether or not it's really a good stable job for you specifically. Now the first factor that will affect whether or not it's a good stable job for you is it depends on where you live and where you work. So some countries and even some states in the United States are more serious about protecting the environment than some others. Here in the United States, some states care, some states don't. So I can't make a blanket general statement for every single state in the United States. Some will have equal opportunity, some won't. But here in California, it's more strict than compared to other states like in the middle states. So technically in the middle states, they can pollute more or they just don't have as much of an impact because they're just so little people living there. So in their eyes, if there's less people there or just less of an environmental impact, they can technically get away with polluting more only because there's just not a negative impact that's seen. So again, just take that into consideration when you're looking for jobs. It depends on where you live. The next factor is that the future environment is not on a good current trajectory. People might disagree with the statement and say that, you know, I'm just a fear monger or that I'm just invoking fear or that like I'm a sheep or that I just believe whatever tree hugger says. I mean, there is truth that the environment is highly politicized and that can be used to attract like young voters for political campaign reasons. And yes, there are innovative technologies that are coming out like alternative energies, electric vehicles, you know, better hybrids and other futuristic technologies. But there's also very destructive events happening right now. And all these events could have been prevented if humans didn't intervene so much. So for example, plastics. You know, deep down, I believe that plastic is a very innovative and useful technology. It's a good material. It's a good invention if used properly. But right now we've produced so much of it that now it's a problem. We've come to accept it as like a everyday part of life and now it's turning to a problem for our human health and for the environment, the oceans especially. If you didn't know, there's like a great Pacific garbage patch in the middle of the Pacific Ocean and it's literally just trash and plastics in the ocean. I don't think that this trash problem would be there if we thought about how long term this plastic can last. So the good thing about plastic is that it lasts a long time, it's very durable, but I mean, we didn't see that coming saying, hey, if we produce too much of it, then maybe it might just last too long that it could be a problem. Do we really need to use a single use fork every time we eat a meal? No. And at this rate, if you don't do anything about it, it's just gonna get worse. There's already a big problem in the ocean and in the future, if we don't change anything, it's gonna be an even bigger problem. So that's why I say that this current trajectory is not good. And if you believe that this is an opportunity for you to get into the job market, then so be it. Problems create opportunity. I'm not promoting to create problems to create opportunity or jobs, but like this is a problem that needs to be addressed. The third factor is that environmental laws that are already set right now, they're just gonna get more strict. So like I mentioned earlier, some countries are more strict than some other countries. More developed countries like here in the United States, they already have strict laws coming out because they want their country to look nice and developed and you know very futuristic even though they're probably the ones polluting the most. The United States is a huge polluter, no doubt about that. But they also want to make strict regulations so they can continue to look good and preserve what they already have. So the laws here are made and they're set already. We have things like the EPA and like the water quality standards and you know, no illegal dumping in the oceans. They're already set and each and every year they're getting more and more strict because they want to keep up with certain criteria. They're coming out with new laws to combat climate change which is good for us so I guess that's one good thing for developing countries even though we're most likely to blame. The fourth thing is that 
Large companies are feeling pressure to do the right thing. So whether or not you believe in climate change, you definitely feel the impacts of it. And of all things in general, you know that pollution is not a good thing to do. It definitely hurts the people and the environment. So anyway, large companies like gasoline companies or plastic companies, they're feeling pressured by everyday consumers to limit or at least clean up their act. They know that if customers get angry, then they're gonna run out of business. So what are these companies gonna do about it? They're gonna come up with ideas like, you know, make their products out of 50% recyclable materials or try to offset their carbon footprint by planting a tree for every X many gallons that you pump out at the gas station. In the end, I know it's not fixing the main issue here, but at least large companies are trying to do something about it. And I do realize that you know they just can't keep this up forever. You have to eventually go towards that clean energy route just to keep up with demand and like satisfy the customers and try to look like the good guys. The fifth factor that you should consider is that there is always room for improvement. So when you've hit rock bottom, there's really nowhere to go but up. I mean, it sounds like it's all doom and gloom from here, that we've reached like the apocalyptic point, that we're like near the end of the world, that if you don't stop polluting by the year, you know, X, Y, Z, then we'll have like mass extinction events. In the end, I don't know what the future will hold, but I do know that if we do change for the better, then the environment can be saved. And that just goes to show that the environmental jobs are in its infancy stage. Only if we're super serious about it, will we all of a sudden see this jump in demand. We'll see a crazy boom in the sustainability and environmental related jobs. And that's sort of what you wanna do. You want to hop into this field before it gets saturated, you know, before it gets full. So right now, because you don't see that much jobs in it, that's when you know that that's in its infancy. That's the time when you should get in, when no one's talking about it. And lastly, the sixth reason is that people realize that there's only one Earth. I know, it's sad to know that people will pollute and destroy their only one home. It's even more annoying when your neighbor, literally who lives next to you, you can't really stop them from doing whatever they want and you can't like separate them into another planet. You guys are technically sharing. You guys are sharing the same clean air that you guys breathe or you're sharing the same dirty area that he created himself because he just keeps littering. In time though, I know it's annoying, gotta be patient here, they'll realize that, hey, maybe I should stop because we only have this one limited space that we cannot keep ruining. I know you've done your part in keeping it up, you know, cleaning up the area. He, on the other hand, he's a slob, he's very dirty, but he'll realize I can't keep this up forever. I cannot dirty up my home because there's only so much clean area left to dirty up. And once they realize that, then they'll come to understand that, you know, there's not much left for them to do. They have to change their act. And so those are the factors that you should consider when thinking about joining this field. People will come to realize that their consequences and their actions or you know their ignorances do have an impact on the future. But because you considered these factors already, now you yourself can make an informed decision whether or not joining this field is right for you. So that's all I have for the video. If you liked the video, go ahead and like share, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.